I think most people still fail to understand just what a giant turning point we've had in our understanding of how cancer works and how we can beat it. The curve for medicine in general, really the last hundred years have just been an amazing renaissance. I truly pinch myself because I can't believe that we are sitting where we are in cancer discovery and treatment. We went from crawling and walking to now a rocket ship. We have the right type of technology, the right collaborative spirit across the globe. Biologists, researchers, scientists, and clinicians, lawmakers, pharmaceutical companies. People from all different specialities are working together. And it's the first time we've been at the precipice where we can say that we're close. Since the beginning of medicine, we've had three basic ways of dealing with cancer. Surgery, radiation, and chemotherapy. The only way we knew how to kill cancer was to essentially treat it like a monster like Godzilla. We want to kill Godzilla without destroying Tokyo. So for decades, really for centuries, the idea of trying to help the immune system recognize and kill cancer was considered by most people in science uh, to be a waste of time. And it turns out we were dead wrong. We didn't realize that cancer was taking advantage of the mechanisms that are designed to keep the immune system from attacking normal cells. And now that we've recognized those tricks, we can block them. The hot uh, area over the really the last couple decades have been immunotherapies. The idea that we can harness your body's ability to fight microscopic invaders. We can teach it to actually fight tumors. Fast forward now to where we are developing precision medicine, targeted therapies, and using and leveraging the immune system. This is unprecedented in the history of cancer research. It's just opened up a whole new field of scientific inquiry and, and created an entirely new paradigm. In 2017, I got diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. My oncologist recommended exhausting all standard conventional treatment. So I explained to her that I wanted to get genomic testing because I had been talking to researchers and they had taken a look at my tumor and they said, you've got a lot of fighter cells. You might be a good candidate for immunotherapy. 12 weeks after my metastatic diagnosis, I entered a clinical trial. The advances that have led to immunotherapy are based on technologies that didn't exist 100 years ago, didn't even exist 30 years ago. I think it started with understanding, obviously, the human genome and understanding also the, the variety of genetic mutations that um, contribute to the development of cancer. When I received my genomic testing results, it was like pulling back the curtain on my tumor. We can actually take a, a snapshot and sequence that tumor and understand exactly the changes that went on to make that tumor tick, to make it what it is. It should be possible, based on our understanding now, to go in, find the immune cells within your system that are specific to the mutation you have, grow those up in a lab, and deliver it back to the patient as a personal precision medicine for their cancer. That sounds like science fiction. That's now exactly what we're doing. Can it work broadly? Can we make these into medicines that are out there getting to patients? That's the heavy lifting that we're doing right now, but it's built on the experience that we know we can activate the immune system and we can point it in the right direction. We're at the perfect sweet spot. We have realized that for cancer therapy, the recruitment of the T cell is crucial. And that comes together in the biotechnology our immune system has billions of T cells. We could actually engage more or less all of them to be equipped with the bite modality. Without the bite modality, the T cells would be blind for the cancer cells. So here you see a bite equipped T cell attacking a cancer cell. Through the presence of the bite technology, the T cell is capable of recognizing the tumor cell as an enemy and then destroying the cancer cell attacking the next cancer cell, and so on and so forth. 
The bite modality is just a, a trick, so to say, to let the whole T-cell system be potently directed against cancer cells. More than half of the programs that we have in our oncology pipeline are BITE programs. So Amgen is very much bringing the BITE pipeline forward. Yeah, they don't have an answer, right? I mean, there are certain aspects of cancer discovery that have truly been considered the undruggable. If a cell is like a switchboard, KRAS isn't just any switch in that cell, it's a master switch. Things happen kind of in fits and starts, mm -hmm. right? So we've known that KRAS protein can cause cancer for more than 30 years, but we haven't been able to make any medicines to do anything about it. There was no real deep pocket for us to latch into to turn that switch from on to off. What we were attracted to was this shallow groove on the right hand portion here. This was sort of the breakthrough where we just hybridized something that held this open onto a scaffold. And this is what we ended up exploiting to shut down the mutant protein from doing all of its cancer-causing activities. The implications here are we may be able to turn off a switch that, quite frankly, all of oncology hasn't been able to do for decades. Because cancer is not one disease, the solutions that each patient's going to have for their particular type of cancer, those are going to be unique also. It's not just immunotherapies or targeting uh, driver mutations or any of these other therapies. It's really what they do together. There's no one magic bullet that's out there. It's through the use of all of these approaches that I think we're gonna make the biggest impact for patients in society. Of course, the breakthrough is not just a scientific excitement. At the end of the day, it's about patience. I would not be alive. I wouldn't be sitting here looking cute in my little red dress if I had not done the research. You know, we're all our own best advocates when it comes to our healthcare. But ultimately, there's a much bigger role and a better role that can be played by the pharmaceutical companies and by clinicians to help guide them uh, towards their best choices. I think there is a place for pharmaceutical companies and oncologists to bridge the gap. The dialogue has to happen. Doctor doesn't always know best. We actually have to ask the patients what are important to them. And Amgen's no different. We've adjusted the way that we have approached clinical research so that we develop medicines that address what's important to them. A decade ago, when we talked about developing drugs, we were really talking about developing drugs for a particular disease. Now, when we develop drugs, we're really looking at the patient be it from clinical trial design, be it looking at the right type of administration of a drug, how can we help that patient and help to improve the patient experience? We know what's at stake and we want to make sure that not only are we helping patients live longer, but we're helping them live better. That's the future of oncology. Of course, we all know someone who's had cancer. This is a problem that we can all recognize. I mean, nothing could be more personal or important.